thank you uh, very much. The one chain is replacing the other chain. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, the mayor of uh, Nijmegen, it is an honor and a pleasure to address you here during the award ceremony of the fourth Treaties of Nijmegen Medal. I would also like to welcome all our guests, the representatives of our partners, Radboud University Nijmegen and NXP Semiconductors, the representatives of the countries who were involved in the Treaties of Nijmegen, Minister Koenders, the Dutch Minister of Foreign Affairs, and of course, Mr. Raimondi, the President of the European Court of Human Rights, the institution that is being presented with the Treaties of Nijmegen Medal here today. It has long been known that we, the city of Nijmegen, cherish our rich history. Our city is full of names and traces that serve as reminders of our 2,000-year-old past. Several events in that past were of great importance to the development of our city. The Romans had a fortification here, Charlemagne built a home here, and during World War II, Nijmegen served as a city on the front line for more than half a year following Operation Market Garden. And of course, this is where the treaties of Nijmegen were signed in the 17th century. In the year 1678, Nijmegen acted as the center of Europe for a short while. No doubt, you all know that the treaties of Nijmegen did not consist of a single treaty, but rather a series of treaties with various composition between different countries. And you may also know that the treaties of Nijmegen continue to be better known outside of the Netherlands than within its own borders. But what was most important about this treaty is that it served as a turning point in European relations. Arms were no longer the means to triumph in disputes. Weapons were supplanted by words. And for the first time, conflicts were resolved at the negotiating table instead of on the battlefield. Uh, to be honest, and you all know it, this did not always remain the case in the centuries to come. We have lived a long and often dark period since then. But it proved that conflicts had the potential to be resolved in an entirely different way. And we, the city of Nijmegen, are proud to say that this unique moment in European history took place within, within our borders. That was a significant decision in our decision to, along with several important partners in our city, establish the treaties of Nijmegen Medal several years ago. Every two years, we present this prize to a person or organization that has made a significant contribution to the European ideal. And as you may know, previous laureates have been Jacques Delors, former president of the European Commission, Umberto Eco, the late Italian writer and scholar, and European Commissioner Nelly Cruz. And today, the European Court of Human Rights becomes the fourth laureate. The list has slowly grown to become quite impressive. We feel that the court is a worthy bearer of this medal. After all, this is an institution that since 1959 has been defending human rights in Europe and looking after the interests of many. And that is not always easy. At the time of the treaties of Nijmegen and the centuries that followed, more and more nations formed. Nations that wanted to handle their own affairs. And that is still the case today. On the one hand, we are seeing an international trend towards globalization. The opportunities that exist today continually make the world seem less vast and easier to explore. When the treaties of Nijmegen were being signed, the negotiators traveled to our cities by carriage. But nowadays, any corner of the world can be reached within a reasonable time frame. And oddly enough, the spread of globalization has not always fostered understanding for others. Nation-centric thinking and nationalism are currently experiencing a resurgence, much like in previous centuries. And although we know much more about other countries and cultures than we did in earlier times, this is not always accompanied by understanding and respect. Things and people which cross national borders are often met with distrust and rarely received with open arms. This puts pressure on relationships between people presents politicians with dilemmas and brings all sorts of risk with it. In the Netherlands, as well as Nijmegen, we have personally experienced this over the past year, when we in a short span of time received a massive influx of tens of thousands of people who were forced by the cruelty of war to abandon house and home and seek temporary asylum here. 
their human rights, their dignity, and even their lives were at stake. And at the same time, we had to address Dutch citizens who were concerned about their own position in the matter. Groups of Dutch people who struggled to keep their heads above water in their own daily lives saw these groups of people entering the country and wondered, sometimes very vocally and sometimes inappropriately, whether their rights were actually being considered. They watched with heavy hearts as large groups of refugees arrived, were then housed and generously cared for, while they, feel, while they felt and still feel that they are often forgotten. As the government, both at the national and local level, we had to address this disparity. After all, we are here for everyone. We, the Netherlands, are signatories to conventions on refugees and human rights, but we also have a duty to govern this country for the people who were born and raised here. And therefore, while taking action, it was our job to be mindful of the positions and dignity of all people, both newcomers and citizens. It is our job to protect the rights, the human rights of all. To my personal opinion, in Nijmegen, we have succeeded in this effort. Public support in our city for efforts made to aid refugees who fled the violence of war has been and continues to be high. And if, as there has been criticism, it was criticism from our own citizens uh, who said uh, we were uh, regarding it in a too cold manner in which we received our temporary neighbors. However, this public support we have met here is no reason to rest on our laurels. It remains essential to pay keen attention to the problems of all the people in our city, including those who have trouble expressing their own objections. It should be obvious that this must be accompanied by clearly communicating our decisions to everyone, including the motivations behind these decisions. So it is quite nice that this week, leading up to today's ceremony, various gatherings and debates addressing human rights have taken place in Nijmegen, in which all people were able to participate. We have an obligation to maintain an ongoing dialogue on the subject with everyone. Dialogue, ladies and gentlemen, central to the realization of the treaties of Nijmegen, and it is now up to us to continue it. Ladies and gentlemen, I have slowly brought us to today laureate, the European Court of Human Rights. The issues that I just described, conflicts between groups, nations or even individuals run the risk of potentially become unmanageable. The court has taken steps in this difficult field for decades and has exerted a strong influence over the years by making various judgments, influencing the attitudes of nations regarding the subject of human rights, creating a more collective European attitude on human rights and influencing the jurisprudence in the various member countries. These are truly great achievements. And we, the city of Nijmegen, are pleased to call ourselves a European city. We are trying to look beyond the borders and seek out collaboration, not only in our own country, but whenever possible abroad as well. Since we feel that the European ideal and collaboration will bring about a better future, we try to operate according to these principles. And this ceremony, ladies and gentlemen, is a part of that. For this reason, it will be my pleasure to award the Treaties of Nijmegen Medal later this afternoon. Thank you for your attention.